In this video, I will show you an example of finding the general solution of a non-homogeneous second-order differential equation with the method of variation of parameters. The differential equation is y double prime plus y equals second squared of x. We know that the general solution is sum of complementary solution and the particular solution, which complementary solution is the solution of the homogeneous differential equation corresponding to this equation. This is the homogeneous equation corresponding to this differential equation. We said the differential equation y double prime plus y equal zero. For solving the homogeneous differential equation, first we have to find the characteristic equation r to the 2 plus 1 equal 0. If you don't know how to solve the homogeneous second order or higher order differential equations, you can watch my videos about this topic. Now that we have the characteristic equation, we have to find r, the roots of this characteristic equation. We can use quadratic formula or it's easier to move one to the other side. R squared is negative one. And from this, R is plus minus a square root of negative one. Usually we show a square root of negative one with symbol I. So we R equals plus minus I. Because here we have two complex roots, we use this formula for writing the solution, the complementary solution. When we have complex roots in the form of a plus minus bi, the solution is e to the ax times c sub 1 cosine bx plus c sub 2 sine bx. And because we have complex roots, note that here a is 0 and b is 1 here. So because a is 0, e to the 0x is 0. So the complementary solution is e to the 0x. But e to the 0 is 1, so we don't need to write that part. Only we have to write this. c sub 1 cosine bx. b is 1. Note that b here is 1. Cosine x plus c2 sine x. This homogeneous second order differential equation which we have here is a really simple and famous second order differential equation which probably you know its solution. Now let's go for finding the particular solution which is the aim of this video. For finding the particular solution with the method of variation of parameters always we use this formula the particular solution equals negative y1 integral of y2 f of x over round scan of y1 y2 dx don't worry if you don't know any of these y1 y2 f of x or round scan in a moment i will tell you what are these sorry i forgot to put y2 here plus integral y2 integral of y1 f of x over round scan of y1 y2 dx this is the formula that we use for finding the particular solution in this formula y1 and y2 are the two functions that we found in the complementary solution so y1 is cosine x and y2 is sine x. Or you can choose this one to be y1, y2, and this one to be y1. Doesn't matter which one to choose, y1 or y2. What is f of x in these formulas? f of x is the function in the right side of the non-homogeneous differential equation. So second squared x is f of x. And the round scan of y1 and y2 can be calculated from this formula. Round scan 
of two functions in general. Suppose y1 and y2 are two functions. This is the definition of round scan of two functions. y1 and y2 put them in the first row of a determinant 2 by 2 and the derivative of them in the second row. And by finding this determinant, you can find the round scan. If you don't know how to calculate a 2 by 2 determinant like this, you have to multiply y1 by y prime 2. This is how we calculate this. Minus, multiply this by that. y2, y prime 1. This is the formula for the run scan of two function. Now it should be everything clear for you here in this formula. And note that one thing you have to consider always, you can use this formula for solving a second order non-homogeneous differential equation if the coefficient of y double prime is 1, like here. If the coefficient of y double prime is not equal to 1, first divide both sides of the equation by that coefficient to make the coefficient equal 1. Always it's better in finding the particular solution to calculate the run scan first. Then calculate the integrals. So let us start with calculating the run scans. Run scan of the two function cosine x and sine x is put the two function in the first row and the derivative of these two functions in the second row. Derivative of cosine x is negative sine x and derivative of sine x is cosine x. Now we have to calculate this determinant. As I mentioned here, for finding this determinant, you have to multiply these two functions. So cosine x times cosine x equals cosine squared x minus multiply these two functions sine x times negative sine x, but don't forget we have a negative here, so plus sine squared x, which equals 1, because we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Now let's calculate the integrals. The first integral is integral of y2. y2 is, in this example, sine x times by f of x. f of x is secant squared x over the round scan, which is 1 dx. But how we can calculate this integral? Note that secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. So we can write the integral in the form of sine x over cosine squared x. Again, remember, secant x is 1 over cosine x. And so secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. For finding this integral, if we choose cosine x in denominator, not cosine squared, only cosine x to be u, then derivative of u is negative sine x dx. So we can say the numerator, this expression, based on this, sine x dx is negative du. And the denominator is u to the 2. Remember, cosine x is u, so cosine 2 is u2. And for finding this integral, easily you can bring u to the 2 to the numerator, make it like this, and use a power rule for calculating this integral. This integral equals negative add 1 to the power negative 1 over negative 1. This negative and this negative cancels, so finally we have 1 over u. u to the negative 1 is 1 over u. What was u? u is cosine x. So this integral equals 1 over cosine x. 1 over u, u is cosine x. Now let's calculate the other integral, which here we have. The integral of y1 f of x over on scale of the two function. y1 is cosine x times by secant squared x over 
1 dx. For calculating this integral, note that secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. Because secant is 1 over cosine, secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. If we cancel one cosine from the top with one cosine from the bottom, we have 1 over cosine x dx. And from the table of the integral, we know that integral of 1 over cosine, or actually secant x, because 1 over cosine is secant x, is ln of secant of x plus tangent of x. And this is the second integral. Now we have the values of these two integrals, we can find the particular solution. The particular solution equals negative y1 negative cosine x times by this integral which is 1 over cosine x times by 1 over cosine x plus y2 is sine x times by this expression which is the other integral ln of secant of x plus tangent of x and if we multiply cosine x in the bracket this cosine and this cosine cancel each other so we can simplify or answer and write the particular solution as negative 1 again note that this cosine and this cosine cancel each other and negative 1 remains plus sine x ln of secant x plus tangent x. Now, if we add the particular solution, which we have here, to the complementary solution, we can get the general solution. The general solution is the sum of complementary solution and the particular solution.